Greetings, I'm Evan Swenson. I'm an author and a book publisher. I'm also the developer of Author Masterminds, sponsors of Readers and Writers Book Club. Welcome to Readers, Writers, and Book Club. You're invited to come along with us as we visit with and learn more about the amazing Author Masterminds authors. Today we'll be talking with Author Masterminds author Gordon Parker, Tales of Crime and Corruption creator. We'll be talking with Gordon about he, how he became a published author and about his three books, including The Empty Mint Mystery. Good afternoon, Gordon, and thanks for joining us on Readers and Writers Book Club. Good afternoon, Evan, and thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun today. Uh, let's see, before we get started with the interview, though, I want to bring up a couple of things, Gordon. One is, is that uh, we're, we have some prizes that we're going to show uh, or give away so as a reward for being here on the Readers and Writers. Not to you, but to visitors. You're not eligible, Gordon. Oh, darn. <laughs> so here's, uh, here we've got this uh, camp light. And how that works is, 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 is that you just push the button and you got a light. However, however, it's even better than that because then if you pull it up, it's a camp light. And I think if you push it again, it actually flashes. Yep, there you go. So we'll give one of those away. I have a drawing a little bit later. And the other thing that we're gonna give away flights is this, um, this is a, it's a light. It stretches out, as you can see, it's a long stretch. And then it turns and twists like that. And so when you turn it on, you can, uh, let's see, where the heck the switch there? There it goes. So then you have a light. Isn't that nice? Okay, so anyway, those are, those are prizes. Neither you or I are eligible, Gordon. So let's I like get- I like them both. <laughs> so let's get, let's get talking uh, if we can. Uh, Let's see. Uh, let's start with this question, Gordon. I notice, of course, and the folks at home will notice that uh, that you're wearing uh, some uh, uh, oxygen. So you must have some health difficulties. Of course, I don't know about that, but the folks at home don't. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about that. You tell us. If you would, uh, what, what's going on here with your health? Why have you got that oxygen? Well, I, I thought people might mistake this for a, one of those crazy mustaches like uh, the Spanish ar artist uh, Salvador Dali used to wear. But since you spotted it, Evan, I'm happy to talk about it. And uh, the Alaskans will remember that in May of 2014, we again had a series of... Uh, terrible wildfires, notably the Funny River Fire, as it's called on the Kenai Peninsula. I was home in Anchorage at the time, and um, as in a direct line, the fire was 65 miles away, so we thought we were safe here. And then one day, I was stopped in traffic at an intersection in Anchorage, uh, and I looked in my rear view mirror and the wind was blowing a cloud, a yellow, bilious, thick cloud over Anchorage. Uh, it had black and red streaks in it. Uh, the doctors later told me that the black streaks were ash and the red streaks were still burning embers. The next thing I knew, my truck was filled with the smoke. I remember then being with my son in the emergency room. And the next thing I knew, it was three weeks later, and I awakened from a coma after suffering a respiratory failure. And I was in a different hospital. Um, twice during that time, I'm told, doctors called my family back to the hospital at nights, believing I would not survive till morning. Um, well, I fooled them. <laughs> in 2014, when I was released from the hospital, the doctors uh, believed that I had perhaps a year to live. 
Uh, and um, I'm very happy to say that last week, I, five years later, celebrated another birthday, so fooled them again. Uh, I uh, don't want to sound like a Pollyanna. This is a terminal situation. It's not going to get better. But in the meantime, um, uh, and, and believe me, there's plenty of times uh, it's not always easy. Uh, waking up in the middle of the night and realizing that this oxygen tube has fallen out and fumbling around in the dark trying to find it <laughs> is, is not pleasant. But I had decided that uh, this is now my reality. And I was not going to uh, just sit down and wait to die that I had life left to live, and I'm living it uh, to the best of my ability. And uh, I take solace from the words of two great people, one of whom was a great former Saints football player, Steve Gleason, who has lived now for six years with ALS, and his motto is no white flags. And one of my great historical heroes, Winston Churchill, who said, we shall never give up, never <laughs> give up. Well, uh, Gordon, it seems to me that um, you may not have become a writer without... Um... You know, in a, in a way, I can almost be grateful for this situation uh, um, because you're right. I have worked very hard in my life and 12 and 14 hour days were not unusual for me in my career over the years, um, but I can't uh, uh, work those hours anymore. And, um, but at the same time, I get bored really easy. And so somebody said, why don't you write a book? And I, I thought, well, why not? So uh, I remembered that about 30 years ago, I, I heard a story or read something that made me think, you know, that would be a really good plot for a novel. So I sat down and, oh, in a relatively short period of time, wrote The Empty Mint Mystery. And I, I never had time to do it before. I didn't have time to do the research. I didn't, didn't have time to do the writing. But now I had time on my hands. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> uh, I was looking at the comments here. <laughs> Valerie oh. writes, Valerie writes, she says, oh, she writes something nice, Gordon. Oh, she, said <laughs> that, uh, uh, she said that she said that that uh, she enjoyed reading the empty mint mystery. She said she liked the interjection of uh, culinary delicacies <laughs> into the dialogue. Well, of course, that's what you're famous for is, is working those recipes right into your books. But then she says it was kind of like Julia Child meets Jack the Ripper. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but why did, here's the question though, but why did you use a nice, why did you use a nice name like Valerie for your villain? Valerie the villain. Valerie wants to know why you used Valerie the villain. Well, you know, she warned me she was going to ask that question, and I have spent some time trying to think of a plausible answer, and I don't have one. <laughs> Only because, Valerie, I hadn't met you at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Valerie, I know Valerie, and Valerie's no villain. She's the, the opposite of a villain. <laughs> she's a, but, she's uh, but, a talented uh, writer herself. But it sure... Uh, it sure goes good together when you say Valerie the villain. So, <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd have to ask you and Valerie, what other name could you use that would go with the villain better than Valerie? Now, uh, Gordon, I think that the You're UK... You're asking me or, or, or Valerie? <laughs> oh, no, you just, you just think about it. We'll let uh, Valerie, uh, uh, what, what she thinks about it. Uh, you came from Louisiana, and I think in your bio it says something like, you were born Louisiana proud and raised Alaska tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, well, I think proud I'm one and of tough. the... Lucky. You're a proud, tough guy, is that it? I'm a, I'm a very lucky guy, you know, to, to have been born in Louisiana and maintained a strong connection with the 
culture and the food and the music of that part of the world, which is really a unique culture. And at the same time, uh, and it's a gentlemanly, I would say, uh, culture. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I grew up in Alaska in the days when uh, uh, Alaska was much more wilderness, really, even than it is now. Uh, we didn't, there was no road to Wasilla, for instance. Uh, we didn't have telephone service throughout the state. In the bush, we had pushed to talk radio and and even in areas that we don't think of now as the bush in southeast Alaska, for instance, there was no telephone service. And I have memories of of spending days with my dad going through the wilderness on hunting trips. Um, you know, each of us carrying a rifle and uh, aware that uh, uh, while we were hunting uh, uh, dinner, uh, there were uh, animals out there who were also hunting dinner. It was a great, wonderful time to grow up and, and, and grow up in such a way that I think in, enabled you to face uh, adversity, uh, uh, better face adversity in your life. So you had to be tough. You were here, uh, Gordon, during the uh, Alaska, Great Alaska uh, earthquake, 1964. I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was a senior in high school, and uh, uh, and then interestingly enough, perhaps a, a few years later, I was at a business trip to San Francisco when uh, we had the big earthquake in San Francisco, and after that, I decided to get a new hobby. <laughs> well. Uh... Uh, Valerie comes back uh, with us. She says, uh, how about Mabel? Um, what is that, Linda? The morose. Mabel the morose. I don't know what morose means. Valerie's got used these big words all the time. <laughs> so, Linda, you know what morose means? M no. Well, Gordon, do you know what sadness. morose means? Some kind of sadness. I'm not sure. Mabel the morose. Valerie, we, we like Valerie the villain better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, somebody, we're going to talk about this other when they have a question for you when we get into your book. Uh, okay. But uh, before we get there, I want to just talk with you, Gordon, a little bit about the characters in your book. You have created two fascinating characters, Trent Marshall and Darcy Anderson. We're going to be talking about Darcy a little bit later here in the discussion today. Are they and your character? Are they the characters in your book? Are they based upon real characters, or is that just you just thought them up and put them together? Or how did you come up with them? Well, you know, I don't think any characters are really, or at least my characters are not no one of them is based on any one person. I think they all have bits and elements of various people and various experiences that we have in, in our lives. Certainly, Trent Marshall does uh, a lot of the things he's noted for uh, or things that I enjoy, you know, good food, fast cars, um, and uh, and so on with 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 many of the characters if you're writing for instance uh, a character that that is going to show some particular bravery you know somebody who you knew at one time in your life who was extremely courageous something they said or did might come to mind uh, but uh, you know the short answer is no the characters are not based on any one person but bits and pieces of many people and many experiences. You know, I've uh, I've noticed something uh, about uh, you, Gordon, that uh, that I didn't realize, and that is is that you occasionally say the short answer is, and you say that <laughs> after you've given the big long answer. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, if that was the short answer, don't ever give us the long answer, Gordon. <laughs> we'll be out of time on one question. <laughs> By the way, well, Bella, I do. Valerie says sorry, she goes up. Now, <laughs> so Darcy and uh, let's see, Darcy and Trent were created when you wrote the Empty Mint Mystery. Correct. Okay. So let's talk about the 
uh, great uh, empty mystery for a moment. Is that based upon anything that's historically? Well, maybe. Um, maybe. I, uh, maybe. I, I do know that... Uh, the short uh, the answer, agree. Gordon. The short answer. Uh, uh, well, the short answer is yes or no. The, the short <laughs> answer is the Confederate <laughs> government took over the mint in, in, um, in New Orleans. There was almost half a million dollars in bullion, which could be is anywhere from 11 to 20 to, to 80 million dollars in today's money, depending on how you uh, transpose it. And when a year later, when the Union retook the city of New Orleans, the mint was empty. So, yes, that was an historical. Uh, that was an historical fact. The maybe part comes in that I was reading a book made up of diary en entries, journals, and letters from that period of that terrible war. And I came across a, a letter from a young girl whose family sent her to Richmond, who said that her brother had been ordered to take the gold out of New Orleans. Well, I did a lot of research and I couldn't find anything to support that. But I did think it was a really terrific idea for a book. So there you are. And that's <laughs> the short end. <laughs> Oh, so uh, if you've got any long questions that you want to uh, ask Gordon, why just write them in the in the uh, comments on the on the uh, Facebook, and we'll get those to Gordon. We won't guarantee that there will be uh, short answers. We'll guarantee that Gordon will claim them to be a short answer. Well, but you got to remember on my bio, my first job was as a rock and roll disc jockey. So I started out making my living by ad-libbing for long periods. Of time. <laughs> oh, well, this, no ad-libbing today, Gordon. No <laughs> ad-libbing today. So uh, you earlier, you said that you were, in some ways, you were grateful for your misfortune. Uh, I'd like to go back to that, Gordon, and, and see how that has shaped your writing. Is that, the, the, you, you know, you, you did some writing and that before you, but no, but no real serious writing. But how has that shaped your writing? Well, I, I think it's just given me a, uh, I, I think it's kind of freed me up uh in a way evan and th that's a good question i really hadn't thought about that uh but it uh when i say it freed me up I'm, in in terms of my original thinking i don't feel bound uh any longer to uh for lack of a better phrase think in terms of cliche and so when i look at some of the things that i've written uh, are certainly not things I would do, and, and I don't know anyone who would do those things, um, but I just feel like my mind is sort of free to wander. And, and, uh, and, and when, when I feel that kind of freedom, sometimes some really excellent scenes and, and, and I think pretty good writing come out of it. Um, and since I, I enjoy mysteries and thrillers, and um, uh, and some of the things involved are, I you know I often think that I hope uh, the police don't ever look at my computer because with all the research I've done on poisons and various ways to <laughs> get at <laughs> oh brother they probably think I'm a serial killer but it's it's not it's research <laughs> um, uh, but I you know it, it it's just freed me up to uh, let my mind go where. Uh, prior to this situation, I probably wouldn't have gone. You know, I, I just realized, Gordon, on this uh, this uh, program we're using, there's a place where we can have polling. And I don't know how to use that, but I w wish I had, because I'd like to take a poll and see how many people think that Gordon is giving the short answer or the ah. long answer. And I think that we'd be in favor of the long answer when you say the short answer. Yeah, well, I think that Gordon probably isn't capable of giving a short answer. I mean, let's be honest. Okay, so <laughs> here, uh, here's uh, Kathy. Kathy? No, Janelle. Janelle says, 
Why did you kill a professor? Now, what book is that in? Oh, that, that's, uh, well, I, you know, kind of hate to say, but uh, uh, it's, uh, I know the character she's talking about. She is a wonderful, sweet, old, elderly lady who was helping uh, Trent and Darcy with some research, and she was, in fact, murdered. Uh, um, you killed her off. Uh, well, I, you know, somebody did, and I oh. guess it had to be me. Yeah. So, well, answer the question, and why did you do that, sweet old lady like that? Well, you know, I hate to sound so hardened, but it was necessary for the advancement of the plot. <laughs> that, that helped make the plot. It did. Now, what, and what I, was... promise, I promise that the sweet old lady didn't feel a thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what uh, book was that in? That was in the Empty Mint Mystery. The, oh, okay, the Empty Mint Mystery, all right. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's uh, ask another question here. Uh, what's this other question, Linda? Oh, Syl asked. Oh, she asked a question. I already know the answer to this one. Uh, if you've ever written any novels set in Alaska, I'm going to wait for that question a little bit later. Uh, okay. Linda, remind me that we can uh, ask that question because we don't want to get there quite yet. I'll tell you where we do need to get, though. So we've got this fantastic outdoor tent camping light, light, lantern, you know, you can see in the dark wherever you go, and you can pull it up, and there's a light. And if for any reason you want to, you can uh, make it flash. So there you go. So here, here's the deal. We haven't got a real way to do the drawing right here now. So here's what you want to do. Write this email address down. Evan, E-V-A-N, at publicationconsultants.com. All one word, all lowercase. Evan at publicationconsultants.com. And all you have to put in the is in the subject matter or in the email, just say, I want to win the camp light. And we'll enter you in the drawing. And after the program, we'll, uh, dis uh, we'll make the drawing and we'll send you your, uh, if you're the winner, this publication consultant's got the logo right there so you can see it. Uh, one of a kind, none of, there's no other one like that to my knowledge in the world, depending on how many people uh, want to win this, why well, maybe we'll get some more of them though. But for right now, this is the only one. So write Evan at publicationconsultants.com and just put in, I wanna win the camp light. Okay, all right. So, Gordon, let's uh, let's talk about that last question that uh, we had. Uh, Sill says, "Have you ever written a novel set in Alaska?" Absolutely, and it's just uh, it's the last one that was just published a, a few weeks ago. Uh, it's called uh, "A Shooting at Auk Bay." and uh, and Trent and Darcy have brought their family to Alaska. Trent often visited Alaska when he was a, a teenager with his father, who uh, first did some work in Alaska, and then, uh, and then later on they, came, uh, they became friends with a retired Alaska State Trooper Colonel named Robert Monk, and they would visit uh, Colonel Monk uh, often in the fall for, uh, uh, for hunting trips and fishing trips, and, um, and so he wanted to bring uh, uh, Darcy to Alaska and he wanted to see it again and of course as usually happens when people come to Alaska they fell in love with it and uh, and there will be more books set in Alaska. Hmm. That sounds good I like that. I do too. Any they other will, questions? They will, uh, be Valerie, keeping their, uh, they will be keeping their New Orleans connection however. 
Oh, you've got uh, you've got a fan and an anti fan here, if that's the right word. Oh, wow. I'd have to ask. I'd have to see. I'd have to ask Valerie if anti fan works here because she's the wordsmith. We found out. She says about your books. I felt that the multiple plots made it a stronger story. Do you know what she's talking about? Multiple plots. I do. And I, I tend to do that in my in my books. Um, it's not anything uh, that I originated. There have been uh, uh, many other writers in this genre who have done the same thing. But it's a sort of a sleight of hand where you toss in characters doing this and that. And uh, just uh, the idea is, uh, you know, to make it a little harder to solve the mystery. And sometimes there might be more than one mystery to be solved. You know, it always amazes me, uh, Gordon, how you authors come up with stuff. You know, I know of many of you, and uh, some of you, I wonder, you're a kind of a, you know, a sweet old gentleman, and yet how you kill off the professor, the little old lady. And Janiel says, I'm still mad about that. <laughs> So, so <laughs> I hope I hope that she'll uh, eventually forgive you for that, uh, Gordon. I, I do too. Yeah. I really do. Uh, you know, uh, maybe she can focus on Betty Anderson, Darcy's mother, and and Ivy Ford, the wonderful character who I love, who became Trent's surrogate parent when his when his mother uh, died at an unexpectedly and very young. Um, but anyway, I, I hope I could be forgiven for that. Well, I hope so. Uh, Gordon, I, I want to just bring up something while we're right here, waiting for another question. Uh, let's see if I can get that on, uh, on the screen. It'll take a second. But uh, you're, we had the shooting at Ock Bay picture here a minute ago. I want to put this next one up. This is a copy of the invitation that you have or will be sending out people to the release party for right, yes. the shooting of Oc, at, at Oc Bay. Uh, so let's talk about that because this is going to be maybe the, mo the, the unique book signing in the whole world, Gordon. Now, it may the, be. I, I don't know be. how many are done with that. I, I've Somebody never heard of it, but maybe we have, and maybe readers could help us out if that's uh, if that's the case. But Gordon is going to have at his release party one of the characters from uh, from the book. He's going to have. Uh, let's see, is it Darcy, Darcy Anderson is going to be there? Darcy. So yeah. Darcy's going to be there, but Darcy's a fictional character. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to us about that, uh, Gordon. How, well, how does just, Darcy come out of the book? I, I, I know I've read books and I've seen movies and all of that where kids and others come out of the book and do all sorts of things. So you're going to open up uh, a shooting at Doc Bay and here comes Darcy out of the pages or what's that going to do? Well, it's just all magic, Evan. You know, we uh, it's all part of... Uh, of mixing reality with fiction, and it's and it's uh, we're just uh, playing with it and seeing and having fun to see uh, where it, this would go. We wanted Trent there as well, but Trent, I think, has probably got a phone call and he's off on another grand adventure. That's got Darcy kind of worried about. Oh man, where what is he going to get us into now? But at the same time, let's face it, Darcy's gotten to be pretty much. An adrenaline junkie, just as, as much as Trent. So she, you're not uh, gonna, she, you're not gonna tell us. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so Mexico in Alaska, that's crazy, but uh, that's a little restaurant out on the Seward Highway. So if you're in Alaska, and you want to, let's see, that's Saturday. That's this coming Saturday, just a few days away. Yes, yes, yeah. yes it is. And uh, one to four p.m. That picture is uh, on the cover or in the ambientation is a picture of Og Bay, which of course, as you know, is a small boat harbor uh, just outside of Juneau. 
Yeah, well, but before I take this picture down, Gordon, I have to ask this question. And of course, I know the answer, but I, others may not. And but I want to hear your answer because you'll expand on my answer. And that is, we got some uh, food in the picture here on the cover of a shootout at Oak Bay, and also your other book, uh, Neighbors and Other Strangers, has that on there. Uh, why do you put food on the front cover of your books? Well, and you also notice a bullet flying through the air there. And I, I think uh, that the covers have sort of, for me anyway, at this point, have become iconic. Uh, Evan, you may recall when we did the cover for uh, the Empty Mint Mystery, I found the picture of the New Orleans Mint from the 1860s, which is on the cover. Uh -huh. And then, as I recall, you said, well, this is about missing gold. Why don't we dribble some gold nuggets down uh, in one corner? And then there was a hand up in the side with a gun. And I love that. Uh, I love that uh, cover, uh -huh. uh, that design. And then uh, after I got a, a, a message from a, a reader who was fascinated, many have been fascinated with the food we talk about in the books. And, and one fellow sent me a message and said, I gained 10 pounds just reading your book. So <laughs> I thought, why, why don't we keep the same um, general format, but change the pictures? And instead of gold coins, because they're all not going to be searching for gold coins, well, let's put some, let's put some food items that are connected to wherever the book is set. And so in Neighbors and Other Strangers, which is set in San Francisco, we have Chapino, which of course is, is a, well, is an original San Francisco fisherman stew. And we have the, the hand firing the gun again. And, and then when we came to Alaska, well, if you're gonna be in Alaska, when I come home, I want king crab. And so. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Uh... So there, uh, there you have uh, neighbors and other strangers with, uh, what do you call that? I can't even pronounce it. What is it? Chapino. Chapino. It was, yeah, it was started by the Italian fishermen in the 19th century. And uh, when they would come in from their work during the day, if there was some fishermen didn't do as well, the others would toss a little, little of their catch into his pot and, uh, and they developed this really wonderful fisherman stew, which is unique to San Francisco, or, or I should say, originated in San Francisco. Uh, uh, and it's called Chapino. Chapino. Linda, do you know what Chapino is? You ever heard of it? No. No. Well, Linda doesn't know what it is. What what book well, is it in? Neighbors and neighbor, Other Strangers. Neighbors okay, and Other Strangers. Okay, Linda. There's a good recipe in Linda in uh, Neighbors and Other Strangers for, for Linda. Rich would probably like to make that a recipe. Uh, so uh, I think we're going to sell one book right here, Gordon. All right. So let's, uh, I know that um, a week or two ago, Gordon, you uh, gave a talk, uh, not the Better Business Bureau, but the Better Breathers Club. Yeah. Yes. Which is sponsored by the American Lung Association here in Anchorage. Right. Uh, what was your message to the to the Better Breathers Club? Well, it was a message that I, I, I talked about earlier, you know. Uh, it's not a few, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a close friend of mine and colleague in Washington, D.C., and he told me that his father had recently been given a terminal diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, uh, you know, I know how that feels. I said, how's he doing? And, and my friend said, he's not doing well. He says he has no interest. He just sits. And I thought that, that's just, just really terrible because he's going to go downhill very, very rapidly. So I talked to the group and it was a great experience about, you know, what I said earlier that yes, okay, so we have a terminal diagnosis. We know that um, it's not easy. When you go to bed, 
and you don't really know if you're going to wake up the next morning. And you wake up the next morning and you don't know if you're going to make it through the day. That's not easy. I don't mean to imply that it is. Um, and sometimes it's very, very scary. But to me, how do you deal with that? Well, I chose to deal with it with humor and with activity. And sometimes I think people think I'm a little bit crazy. They'll say, how you doing today? And I'll say, well, I didn't see any candles and flowers, so I got up, you know, so it's going to be a pretty good day. Yeah, you're well, on the right side of the dirt. You betcha. Yeah. Actually, by the way, I stole that line from the old comedian Red Skelton, you know. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, that's just the way I chose to deal with it, with humor mm -hmm. yeah. and with enjoying uh, as much life as I have left. And also, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed working. I cannot, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively immobile now. I can't do much in the way of walking. I can't drive. Um, I have people who help me and I have family who are, who are terrific and friends. Um, but, you know, I can still work with my mind. Uh, my mind is as sharp as ever, although <laughs> Might be some who say it was never all that sharp, but uh, <laughs> it's as sharp as it ever was. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I can write and, uh, and, and I have a lot of fun doing that. Um, I don't have the stamina I once had. So I write for an hour and I rest. Um, eh, that's just my reality now. It's not good and it's not bad, you know, it just is. Um, that's what I talked to them about. And it was a great experience. It was also, you know, as Evan, as you know, I've talked to you about this for me to appear right now in front of this camera with this oxygen tube in my nose, um, took me a long time to get here. Uh, it was not an easy decision to make. And as you recall, when we, when I first became part of your group uh, and we do our weekly conference, video conference calls for first year, probably before I turned my camera on, I took this out of my nose and I wouldn't let y'all see it. And I wouldn't let anyone take a picture of me with it. And then, uh, then I decided, well, you know what? I've worked with these guys for a long time. They're good people. So then I began to let my colleagues, you and my colleagues see it. And um, the speech with the Lung Association group was the first time though, I actually went out in public, a public experience and made a speech, made a talk. And I made yeah. many speeches over the years. Yeah. Um, so that was just one in a row, Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> so Saturday, you're gonna do some things. Uh, Victoria, right. uh, she's uh, got some, uh, some history along your line. And she says, I'm with Gordon. Fighting cancer is similar. Don't waste what you were given. So I'm great that, grateful for you and Victoria Good that you, you haven't Victoria. wasted what uh, Victoria is a cancer survivor. She also said, uh, ask, and you, I think you answered this question, what do you put the recipes in the books? Well, now, actually, uh, I don't know that the, the complete recipes are in the book. So you hold stuff back? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, just like any other great chef. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do people get the recipe after you've put up your appetite, Gordon? I do, I do have a blog. I do have a blog. And the recipes are on your blog? They are. Also, when I post... Uh, the blog on my on my uh, Amazon website, Arthur's page, the blog, the new blog posting shows up. Um, so uh, my blog is travelsthroughlife.com or the, my author page at Amazon. So you go to Amazon and look up uh, Gordon Parker. Right. Yeah. And they, they, they'll go to your author page. And, and the author the, page will uh, will have the recipes. Well, the latest uh, the latest blog <laughs> posting will be up uh -huh. there, and those okay. are 
those are generally recipes or sometimes I talk about restaurants. Okay. <laughs> okay. So your blog, how can, how can people find your blog? Travels through a life.com. Travels through a life.com. Correct. Okay. Travels through a life.com. All right. So Valerie again says, what is buttermilk pie? <laughs> what is buttermilk pie? It's uh, sort of like chess pie with buttermilk. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, th th Linda, did we give this uh, light away? Just the one. Just okay. The so let's give this away. This is the one that stretches out a long ways. Remember, got the corner on it so you can get down in little places. Uh, it's a neat little light. Look at that. It's nice and bright. Uh, it's, it's nice and uh, it's one of a kind. You can't find these at your supermarket, especially you can't find it when it's got the uh, author mastermind logo on it. So it is unique. It's the only one around. So if you want to be the winner of this flexible light, why well, just send an email to Evan, E-V-A-N, at publicationconsultants.com, publicationconsultants.com. And in the email or in the subject matter, just say, I want to win the flexible light. I want to win the flexible light. Evan at publicationconsultants.com. Uh, we'll, we'll have, every time we have one of these uh, live interviews, we're going to have some prizes. So you want to come every time. And I think we'll get more sophisticated at this. You that were here last time, uh, you notice we didn't have any visuals. And this time we do have some visuals, uh, some artwork, and you can see some things. And we'll get better at that. Uh, as time goes along, we're learning. And we appreciate you being here and learning along with us. So any other questions, uh, Linda? Comment. <laughs> okay, Gordon, oh. here it comes. Oh. Vic uh -oh. <laughs> Victoria. Victoria's got some really nice recipes. Oh. Uh -oh. So Victoria says, tell Gordon I'll share with him if he will share with me. I'll tell Victoria she's got a deal. No, no, that's a deal. Okay, you're on, Victoria. All right. Well, this has been fun. Anything, last words that you would like to say, uh, Gordon, before we go? Anything that we left out? Just give us the really short answer. <laughs> I, well, I just really appreciate the opportunity at this stage of my life to be able to uh, talk to people through my books and in person. And uh, I love it, of course, when people read my books and enjoy it. Uh, but also like when I spoke to the Lung Association group, you know, if I can, uh, if I can help people who are in a similar situation uh, enjoy the last uh, whatever time they have left, then then that's just a little icing on the cake. Uh, and uh, and Evan, I really appreciate uh, your support and the support of all my colleagues. It's yeah, well, been a grand adventure. Yeah, it, it's, but this is just beginning. It hasn't been a grand adventure. It's You're the right. beginning it of a grand, grand, grand adventure. Yeah. Gordon and others, thanks for being here today. We look forward to seeing you again on Readers and Writers Book Club. And uh, in the meantime, keep in touch. <laughs>